Hello Farms friends, we're here to show you five outstanding Colts that are coming up in our February 16th through 18th Sporting Collector Firearms Auction. These auctions this year, I think you'll notice, especially as we go through, are taking a huge step up in quality. So as you watch this video, keep that in mind that these aren't premier auction items, these are on our Sporting Collector Firearms Auctions. Uh, there's an increase in quality because we want you to come to these auctions. We want you to come here in person, one, because it's a gorgeous new facility in Bedford, Texas, in case you hadn't heard already, and because we're bringing gun shows back. Not literal gun shows, of course, you can rent table space and there's third party vendors. We just want the atmosphere of the old gun shows that we all know and love, that we all miss to a certain extent, where friendships are forged, all the great guns are under one roof, you're building these networks and you can just kind of celebrate being a gun guy around other gun guys and gals, of course. So we'd love to bring back that atmosphere. We'd love you there. And here we have five guns on the table that'll hopefully sweeten the deal a little bit with this increase in quality. We're gonna start chronologically and we're gonna start pretty early in the Colt story and that's with Colt Dragoons. Colt Dragoons to me are just a fantastic collecting opportunity. You're getting in at some of the earliest, the very earliest Colt productions under the Colt name but you're not gonna have to pay the giant premium that you see with say, Patterson's or with Walker's. So very early Colts and extremely collectible. So let's start off with the first model Dragoon. Now, of course, a very close step from the Walker, uh, but also with significant improvements. And within a year, so Samuel Colt had heard, you know, some of the, the things that were happening with the Walker that weren't desirable, not all of which were the revolver's fault, but he did make some improvements. So while those were, the 1847 Colt Walker. This is the 1848 uh, Colt Dragoon. So very quick turnaround time, at least what we would consider by today's standards, for making improvements and getting them released. Um, the Dragoon's a little bit shorter. You have a shorter barrel, you have a shorter cylinder, which hopefully would have fixed some of those extra, uh, those excessive loading issues and, and exploded cylinders. Um, overall, a lighter gun, not by much. This is still hefty, so substantial, still a lot of firepower uh, for a revolver at the time. First models, of course, the first two years of production, so 1848 to 1850. There's about 7,000 of them made. Uh, th that number's fishy or, or fuzzy because there's still, you know, the transition from the Walker to the Dragoons and using some of those parts and concurrent serial numbers. Anyway, there are, of course, a couple things, first of all, that identify this as a first model Dragoon. We have the combination of round cylinder stops, a carryover from the Walker, and the square back trigger guard here on the first model. That definitely makes it a first model. And there's some characteristics on here that define it as a Dragoon over a Walker, most notably the change here at the grips where it joins the receiver. So this has this 90 degree sort of junction between grips, wood grips, uh, frame, everything's 90 degrees, very easy to produce. Walkers have sort of an oblong shape as you get up there. And of course, a retaining latch on our loading lever quickly defines this as a Dragoon. Uh, on a walker, it's just a small vertical spring that kind of descends right about here. Uh, this makes sure it stays up so when firing, that recoil doesn't drop that uh, loading lever down and jam your revolver mechanism. Obviously, quite a hazard during combat. This one still has a very visible cylinder seen on it, looking quite good, especially for a first model. Uh, we also have on the side, uh, the letters ME. We've sold first model Dragoons uh, to issue to certain states or sold to certain states in the past, and they draw a pretty penny. And so here we have the ME or the main initials over the top of the wedge there. Definitely something for collectors to pay attention to. Moving from the first model to the second model Dragoon. Now the second model Dragoons are the rarest of the three Dragoons. These are produced so you have from 48 to 50, 50 to 51, only 2,700 produced of the second models. How can you tell a second model? Well, the second model transitions, we still have our square back uh, trigger guard here underneath, but we've moved to rectangular cylinder stop. So all the other features are the same. Uh, the grip shape, we have things up here. They've also made a lot of changes internally uh, that you won't see, like an extra roller bearing for the hammer. The mainspring has changed. There's, there's quite a few changes uh, that they were implementing at the time, but visually for us, externally, if you wanna find a rare second model, check out for those rectangular cylinder stops and the square back trigger guard. I should mention too, one of the 
changes those changes that are harder to see is that the trigger guard is a little wider on the second model dragoon that's true as well this one also appears a matching serial numbers on all the major external parts so big plus for a rare gun uh it's in the correct serial number range in that uh 8 000, about 10,700. Uh, for that 2700 that were produced so it's in the right serial number range matching serial numbers a rare second model dragoon not a lot of collections can say they have that and finally our third model dragoon and the third model cold dragoon is just a classic if you see a dragoon in a in a movie you're seeing likely a third model dragoon they're the most common uh, there's over 10,000 produced. These are what fit the end of the uh, production from about 1851 to 1861. Absolute classics. Uh, these kind of fit the theme of transition. And now we have square cylinder stops and a rounded trigger guard. So the first time we've seen that. So while these were the most produced dragoons at, again, 10,000, 10,500, um, obviously this is a horse of a different color because only 12 to 1700 of the third model Dragoons were produced to accept a shoulder stock. So, and not only was it produced to accept the shoulder stock, but we're selling it with a shoulder stock. So a uh, fantastic way, you know, a little bit of rarity on each one. We've state marked second model, all matching rarity in its own right. A third model made to accept the shoulder stock and with the shoulder stock, um, it's an easy collection. It's almost an instant collection of Dragoons right there. So moving on again chronologically from the Dragoons, classics, arguably one that's more classic. It's hard to overstate what the 1851 Navy did for Colt as a business. Immensely popular, used by heroes and outlaws alike, um, second in production for percussion Colts only to the 49 pocket. So immensely successful piece, um, of course, at the time and afterwards, painting the picture of that is the West, that is the American West. The 1851 Navy is in the holsters of just about everybody until they decided to be replaced by peacemakers. So 51 Navy is just an incredible, incredible Colt firearm. Here's a beauty. Now I know we, and, and you've heard me call it now oh, 51 Navy and you know it is a 51 Navy. This is a first year production. And if you know your Colts real well, you know, a first year production Colt 1851 Navy was actually produced in 1850. Uh, and there may have been a cue to that already because only those earliest of those uh, Colt 51 Navies will have that square back. So when you hear about a square back Navy, boy, that's a collector piece worth paying attention to. And here we have one in an SNC auction. So first year classic 1851 Colt Navy square back with Frank, some really nice grips on there too. Heck of an opportunity to put one in your collection this February. The last of the Colt percussion revolvers, and not just the last that Colt ever produced, you're talking about the last models that Colt would have seen produced in his lifetime. Colt dies in January of 1862. Um, these, the Colt 62 police started production in 1861. And just like the, the Winchester 95, is sort of the pinnacle of, of lever action designs for Winchester. There's a strong argument to make that the 62 police is the pinnacle of percussion designs by Colt in the 19th century before they really begin pursuing uh, the, the cartridge guns, the famous cartridge guns. The 62 police is, so Colt has military contracts locked up. They're, he's selling 51 navies, uh, more than he can count, and 60 armies as well. How can he sell more guns? He's not satisfied with this. How can he sell more guns? Well, instead of the military market, you pursue the civilian market. Well, how do you sell things to the civilian market? Well, if his 1849 pocket taught him anything, so you make it smaller. Make it smaller, more concealable, more carryable in urban environments, or just for people who aren't gonna wear them on their holsters all day long. You're, you know, you've got someone who's gonna tuck it into a suit jacket or a, or a purse, anything like that. So here we have a smaller gun. And besides just making it smaller though, which is an oversimplification, it's really, the best of his three arguably best designs, it's the size of the 49 pocket. So we've have, we have a scaled down revolver, we already addressed that. You also have all the technology that was brought in with the 1860 Army. You have a creeping loading lever. Um, you have the rebated cylinder, which allows for a larger round and a, and a smaller uh, cylinder. And then of course you have the power 
of the 1851 because unlike most Colt Pocket revolvers, these aren't in 31 or even 28 like the Root. This is a 36 caliber revolver in this size, so pretty nice. Uh, you got plenty of power, plenty of size, all the technology that you saw from the previous uh, Colt percussion revolvers, and here it is in a sweet package case known as the 62 Police for the civilian market. Fantastic revolvers. These, as you can see, fantastic nickel finish, cased pair, love seeing that as well. Very desirable, and if all that wasn't enough, and their significance for Colt revolver history, these are an in inscribed presentation. And here on the back strap, we can read, presented to Lieutenant G.H. Book, by Company A of the 82nd PV. Now that's uh, Company A of the uh, 82nd Pennsylvania Volunteers. There's some information about Lieutenant Book that comes with these, and we won't hash it over here, um, but just what a fantastic pair. And it's everything you need. So the, the evolution of Colt percussion revolvers, the great looking nickel, the case, the fact that they're a pair, that they have a his historic inscription. It's everything you could want, and frankly, they're, they're beautiful just as an overall design. I know we said they're, they're the pinnacle of the design, and I can see why people say that. With the, with the fluted cylinder, you have this beautiful sweeping kind of cover from the 1860 Army. Everything's just flush and nice here. Even the latch for the loading lever, they are beautiful, beautiful little revol revolvers. And a perfect example of that increase in quality that we talked about in the Sporting Collector firearms. We would really, like to see you there to see these for yourself to help us bring back the gun shows of old you can see the full auction listings at rockislandauction.com you can place your bids there but you're missing out if you don't come to the greatest gun show you've never been to that's february 16th through 18th or better yet the full day preview on february 15th hope to see you there until next time keep your powder dry